So I'm going to change this song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. His Son gives thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks. Because he's hidden Jesus Christ, his son, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son, oh, give thanks. He's given Jesus Christ His Son oh, He's been with a grateful heart He's been to the Holy One He's been because He's given Jesus Christ His Son
Good morning to everybody. So as you already found out, our pastors are traveling. They're in Spain. And while they are out, we have a chance to, some of us have a chance to come and share. So it's my turn today. And uh, as I was pondering and thinking about what I was going to share these last few weeks, um, I was just walking along and I felt like the Lord dropped a little nugget inside my heart. And that's what I have to share today. It's a little nugget. And, and before I share, I just want to pray. Lord, I trust you. I don't trust myself, Lord. I trust you. Put a guard over my mouth and tongue. Let me speak your word, what you desire for us to hear. Lord, it's not my desire to add or to subtract. Let it be according to your will, I pray. In the name of Jesus, how we need you. And before I share this little nugget, there is a song. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. And he put a song in my soul today. It's a song of praise. Hallelujah. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Please join me in singing this. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put us in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He put us, he set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. Again, he brought, he brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. Again. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So what I wanted to share today was something simple and something that I can relate to certainly my experience what what I have understood and what I have seen so as I was just walking along I felt like the Lord just dropped a little nugget inside my my heart and it went something like this I am in chains because of my disobedience I am in chains because of my disobedience. And that hit me, but I understood it. It shocked me, but I understood it. Yesterday, trying to add to this, I did some searching on the internet and I looked up chains in the Bible I said, where does this come up and, and what is 
uh, it, what does the Bible say about change? So I, I found the word change in the Old Testament related to the temple or to the tabernacle, you know. Uh, also found change in the New Testament. Well, we know uh, most of us are very familiar with Paul the Apostle and, and how he, uh, you know, was called by the Lord to preach, to preach to the Gentiles. And he did. But it, it's amazing, but he, he would be with a group of people in a particular small town or city, and he would say, well, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. I'm going to give you an example. And a prophet would come up and say, they're going to bind you. You're going to be bound. You're going to, you're going to find uh, trials, tribulations. You will be enchained. And Paul would say, well, I've got to go to Jerusalem. And so it's not that he didn't know what was coming. He knew and he was warned, but somehow he knew what the Lord was asking him to do and he trusted the Lord and he went and boy, he found everything that they said. He was bound, he was beaten. Many times uh, he was chained. And so when I relate this back to this nugget that I got, I am in chains because of my disobedience. I see that these chains are not similar to the chains that we see in the New Testament with Paul. They're different chains. But I, in my life and in my experience, I can testify to what this means. For me, I'm going to give you an example. I come to the youth meetings with Tiffany, my uh, David and, and all the other youth with uh, Sharon, Debbie, Peachy. And we come Friday nights and we have, uh, Sarah's here, Richard, and we have a meeting and normally it's, you know, just a small group of youth. And uh, one time, not too long ago, I, I walk in and there's a circle and there's a, a youth in the middle and they're surrounded by some of the other youth and they're praying for them. And then as I watch this, it, 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 once they finish with that one, he, he moves out of the circle. And after a little bit, another person just comes up without being prompted, without being pushed or touched or whatever. Another person comes up and the group automatically comes around them and starts to pray for that person. Very interesting. And when that person was finished, again, the group dispersed, and I was standing right there on the second, behind the first row, and I felt just a little nudge. You go up and you get prayed for. Long story short, I didn't. Okay? And later, as I reflected on this, I realized, did I just miss the Lord? Did I just miss his, his prompting, his voice? And, and you see, the, the, the reason I can understand this and the reason I can relate to this is because ever since I became a Christian years ago, you know, I pray for other people. I pray for myself, you know. I see the weaknesses in me if you want to call them chains, if you want to call them sins, whatever. But I asked the Lord, take this away from me. Cleanse me. Uh, deliver me. Uh, 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 break the chains that hold me bound. I ask it all. Why the Lord doesn't do it, I don't know. I know, I know the Lord is good. I've been, I've been listening to the, to the preaching. I've been, I, I, I read the Bible. I listen to many different pastors and many different preachers. I mean, from Jonathan Edwards on. I know God is good. He is good. He's a God of love. And he has proven that. Uh, he has proven that without a shadow of a doubt. I know. He is a God of love, a father of love. He's so great. So great. So wonderful. 
you know, so why does he not deliver me of all these things that, that are bothering me, things that are, that I know are in me, weaknesses that I have, that to me get in the way. To me, uh, they become like a snare. Uh, I have to struggle. Despondency. You know, uh, you know, you're a Christian, and you act this way. You're a Christian, and you say these things. You're a Christian, and you have these thoughts. What is it with you? you know, and many times it's taken me into, you know, a dark hole, let's just put it that way, where you just wonder, what is going on here? But what I want to say is, God is not a God of the microwave oven days. God is not a God of McDonald's drive through window, get your order in two minutes and eat it and be done with it. So what I, what I have learned, what I have seen, God is patient, God is good, but he will wait and he will do things in his time and no one is going to pressure him. And you can ask until your head falls off, it's not going to happen until he gets ready to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And he is God. He is on the throne. You know, the more I think about God, imagine, you know, the Bible describes God. Fire. And not just a little fire. I don't know how, how vast is this fire. He's God. He's on the throne. He rules. He reigns. He's not a God of the microwave oven, but he is here, and this world is, is in his hands. We are in his hands. He's alive. He is good. I really believe God gave me an opportunity for something. I missed out on it, okay, but I believe he gave me the opportunity. And, and it, to me, it spoke to me because why, what did it say? It said, when God is ready, you know, and he tells you, okay, now, and if, and if we were to obey, then he will do what he wants to do with me for that particular moment. But if I choose not to move forward, I mean, I ha it, it, took obe it had to take obedience. So I understand. It had to take obedience. Why? Because I had to leave my place, come up, humble myself, and, and say, well, it doesn't matter if it's a youth meeting, and it doesn't matter if I'm not, part, if I'm not a youth, a 20-year-old. It doesn't matter because I'm, I'm trying to follow the Lord. I'm trying to listen and do what he wants me to do. And if it just so happens to be on a youth meeting in the midst of a youth circle, and he says, go, I should go. But I just want to bless the Lord because that is the nugget. That is my experience. That is what I felt the Lord uh, wanted me to share. Uh, the reason I started with this song is because, you know, apart from my situation or, you know, whatever struggles I may have, God is good. And he is love. And, and God does not forget us. We might think sometimes that he does, but he doesn't forget us. He's patient. And like Richard said and others, he's working in our hearts too. He's working in our hearts. And there's a time. And I'll just say this, a little testimony. God led me to the job that I've got today. And I went dragging he had, it's almost like he had to drag my feet to get there because I didn't want to go there, okay? When I looked, when I interviewed and I looked, I'm an engineer, and, and, and when I looked around Atlanta and when I looked at all the companies, you know, I'm looking for a big company with a lot of insurance, medical insurance coverage for me and my family, you know, good pay. I'm looking for what I'm used to, for what I'm comfortable with. Well, this little company where I'm at today didn't have any of that. 
all the comforts, all the creature comforts that, that I was used to. So I didn't want to go there. And so several people, God used different people to, to tell me, have you tried BBI? Did you look at BBI? Why don't you go and talk to BBI? No way. No way. No way. So finally, finally he got through to me. Finally, I went and knocked on the door. And I've been there now for six years. Anyway, here's what I want to share about that. Here recently, in the last few weeks, my amplifier, my product, the one I'm responsible for, has fallen apart. The factory in Miami who is building this product is calling, complaining, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. What are we going to do? We got hundreds and thousands that we got to build and ship. What are we going to do, Al? And the owner gets involved now. The owner of the company gets involved. And he starts sending an email. He never sends an email to me. He starts sending an email to my boss and copies me to the boss. Copy Alfredo Acosta. I'm looking at this, and he's talking about how upset, how frustrated he is with this, and he's tired of it. What are we going to do? And I'm pulling my, my hair out. I'm banging my head against the wall. Ask my wife. Working late, working late nights, uh, taking my vacation time, cutting it short and working. Long story short, I got to the point where I was... Um, almost in despair because this is it's a lot of stress a lot of stress is different from from uh you know a, a stress of a sickness or things like that but it, it is a stress it's a stress on your heart on your mind on your body and i got to the point where i you know i'd had it and i was in prayer and I, all i could do was say jesus 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 and in the middle of the night as i said jesus 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 I could do nothing else but hit the ground, put my head on a pillow, and go to sleep. But when I woke up, it was like it was all gone. It was like uh, when a storm passes through and you get the sun starts coming out from behind the clouds and you get a nice little mist and everything is, is just different. There's a calm and it's peaceful. That's the way I felt. I was sharing with my family. And that's why I thought about this song. Because, you know, in the midst of all of that, boy, God takes care of business. You know, he, gets, he lets us get to a certain point. But then he, he knows how to take care of business. He knows how to take care of us. He brought me out of the miry clay. He put my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. Anybody want to share anything? Anybody have a thanks offering? Anybody have a testimony? Anybody want to share anything? Because I'm done. But I do want to give the opportunity if anybody wants to bless the Lord for something, if anybody wants to say anything. The Lord is good. Stay up here. As you were talking about obedience... And you were saying that you missed that on that Friday night. God is trying to show all of us that when he nudges to obey quickly. Mm -hmm. But as you were speaking that and saying that, I was like the Lord showed me is when you obey quickly, he's teaching you. And as you do it, the chains are going to drop off. But Al, they're not just going to drop off of you. They're going to drop off of your children and your grandchildren. So Amen. it's a wonderful thing that he's showing you. Um, but I just saw this as you spoke. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. I'll finish with this. I'll tell of the pit with its gloom and despair. I'll praise the dear Father who answered my prayer. I'll sing my new song, the glad song story of love. Then join in the chorus with the saints above. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. And number four says, I'll sing of his wonderful mercy to me. I'll praise him till all men his goodness shall see. I'll sing of salvation at home and abroad till me knees shall hear the truth and trust in God. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.